Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to Conversations. My name is Sabahat Nawaz and along with my co-director Rabia Jalil, we have set up this platform for academic um, and educational conversations uh, with academics and educators uh, who have worked, who have shaped and are constantly shaping academia and education in Pakistan. Uh, we are aiming to archive, document, and have focused discussions with our educators and practitioners um, who, are, who have been connected with a higher education in Pakistan. Um, so I'm going to ask Rabia Jalil to please introduce our guest today. Thank you so much, Sabahat. Thank you so much, Rashid, for coming on board. Uh, we are delighted and, and uh, extremely honored to have you on board. Rashid is a very busy man. It was very hard to get hold of him, I have to say. Uh, well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. Rashid Rana needs no introduction. We're all familiar with his uh, ingenuity, his illustrious career, and his iconic imagery as one of the leading um, visual artists of South Asia. Uh, but this particular feature, uh, this session is, is special because this is featuring for the first time for the first time, uh, Rashid Rana's journey as an academic visionary, as a leader, and as an educator. He, for over 25 years, he started off his teaching career at MassArt Boston, where he was doing his, uh, where he was um, undertaking his graduate studies, his MFA. Uh, then he came back to Pakistan, um, worked at NCA and PIFT for several years, then went off to BNU, and now is uh, heading at the School of Visual Arts. Um, and design at the Beacon House National University as the Dean. Thank you so much, Rashid Rana. Uh, um, I also want to say that uh, he is a perfectionist and in the day and age of social media where everyone is entitled to an opinion, everyone kind of has a voice, uh, it gives rise to a lot of mediocrity. And he is often uh, found saying that it's hard to compete with med mediocrity and I completely agree with him. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Rabia. It's The uh, very kind introduction. Uh, I must congratulate both of you uh, for this really amazing uh, initiative that you have started. I think it has a lot of potential. We are, I think we really look forward how it develops from this point onwards. Um, let's see what we can cover in today's session. And uh, I hope we uh, could work, uh, we could meet again uh, in, in, the, in the future as well. Yes, we, we definitely will, Rashid. We definitely will. I mean, there's, there's very little time and so much to ask you. Uh, and so we will begin with our first question. And, and that is really you sharing, uh, um, in your opinion, what uh, the, the role of an art school for a community and for an individual. Um, I, 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 I mean, there could be one perspective that artists uh, and creative individuals are, uh, you know, they have a born talent and and. An, but I really feel that art schools uh, have played uh, and are playing a very significant role in our lives, uh, especially uh, in the global south countries like Pakistan. I think they have amazing uh, uh, so, uh, to NCA, my life would be very I think uh, uh, art school have a huge role to play, especially uh, considering in, 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 in I was just spoke about Google South and and in where because of the, uh, the institution of democracy has not flourished. So therefore, generally in the society, there are many restrictions uh, in terms of thinking and and, and uh, uh, you know. So uh, you're taught to follow certain conventions. You're taught to be you know orthodox. So. Uh, in that scenario, when you land at an art school, where the very education that you get, <clears throat> the na very nature of it is all about questioning whatever you do or whatever you think. So I think in that sense, I think art schools have a much significant role to play, especially in, in, in developing countries. Okay, so um, Rashid, we, most of us know that you're a workaholic and, uh, um, and, and you love your work. How would you define your, your creative energy? I remember uh, my late uh, friend uh, Jahana Rahlak, uh, uh, the Kathak dancer, died very young. Uh, she said something which has remained with me since then, that it, whenever I go on stage, I dance with the energy of my audience. So I, I would I, I would say that uh, it's it's always a two-way energy when I that I feel and, and receive from either from my students or uh, in a larger sense from the context one is operating in. 
uh, and, uh, and, 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 and also um, often our imperfections, our limitations, which becomes our aspirations and desires and then result in our creative productions. So uh, talking about production, uh, Rashid, you, you occupy, you take on multiple roles. Um, you uh, are into art making, um, you say often, uh, into art making, curriculum making, and exhibition making. So how, does, how do these three uh, uh, ways of being converge for you? Well, for one, they're all uh, forms of production, various different kinds of forms of production. Um, and secondly, um, these these borders uh, they don't really exist in my mind uh, uh, i mean i do use these terminologies and in our daily con professional conversations i know remember i remember you um uh mentioning that i contradict myself sometimes i call myself uh, an artist and the other moment i say i'm not making art it's something to this effect um yeah true but 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 in my head i really <clears throat> try not to draw any kind of boundaries and i do not conform to certain labels and terminologies and then try to produce whatever i uh, can produce based on uh, certain ideas and then, and it's the ideas that have to take certain physical form and and i mostly focus on that and it's the ideas that connect all these uh, different kind of practices and then there's some um, uh, connecting uh, you know there are you know their positions and uh, yeah. you know ideology is a very heavy word but there are no, certain philosoph- ideas which line through all these yeah the, the certain philosophical contexts underlying all these but if you want to use that word yes yeah hmm. Hmm. so can i can i ask you about your evolutionary journey as an educator and um, and and taking on from that also um, you know your evolutionary journey as a young teacher to um, the head of an institute how was that Sure, I actually have uh, uh, prepared a presentation, but it's mm-hmm. not very, like really finished. And can I use that? I mean, please. just as a pointer for sure, take you sure, through sure. Please, a journey, please. which is so you know. We, um, let me just share my screen. Okay, so uh, this <clears throat> maybe your, your your this initiative has helped me, you know, uh, go through some of my archives, which have been sitting in boxes for a long time. So I've done a very cursory kind of an exercise and have some basic stuff to share, but uh, hopefully maybe this uh, would help. Uh, this will just be a beginning of, you know, maybe uh, digging uh, further and, you know, pulling some memories, which are, not just connect, which are not just linked with me, but many of the other, many other uh, friends and colleagues, uh, who, you know, who have worked together with me uh, and I have worked with them uh, in this whole journey. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, this is a this is this is not me, but uh, it's a child from um, uh, school where I studied until class five, at the primary school. I visited that <clears throat> around two thousand uh, year two thousand when I was working on my first solo show, and I took some photograph there. It's somebody I could have could be very well sitting in that school and uh, writing a takhti uh, uh, in the same way. And I, as they say in, uh, in the American uh, sense, uh, I belong to Generation X. And my generation has gone through uh, many, many uh, changes and I, uh, experiences in terms of uh, inventions and, uh, and various different uh, tools that we use for learning and sharing uh, throughout our lives. So um, yeah, so starting from, uh, from, from a wooden tablet, I have, was going through, I mean, from these boxes, and then I came across floppies and uh, uh, slides and, 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 and CDs. And, and imagine all of this has already become obsolete. Mm. So, um, um, yeah, so that, that also, like, in a way, defines uh, my, my journey as an artist and as a, as a, as a, uh, as a teacher, the kind of uh, how the ideas have evolved and, and, you know, the kind of formats and practices have evolved as is closely linked with what this is this last slide that I uh, shared with you. <clears throat> but uh, it's all started by incidentally or accidentally landing at NCA. Uh, uh, and it was my introduction to uh, arrival at the art school was uh, circumstantial. And I think that's true for most um, mm-hmm. uh, individuals uh, working in the art and design uh, sector in Pakistan. And then because there's not, there are not too many uh, um, 
venues uh, or opportunities for one to be aware that uh, you know you have to go to a museum, you have to go to an art school. So it's it's really often it's circumstantial. So I landed there. Uh, I'm sitting there in my picture with my class fellows from from uh, first year NCA 1988. Oh, wow. Then I studied there and then I. We can Sorry. hardly recognize you. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know if it's a compliment <laughs> or not, but uh, nevertheless, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, oh God, then after one, NCA. Yeah. We shine in all stages of life. <laughs> thank you, Raja. Uh, then I, after that, I was very keen to go study abroad and care to see my brother in support. I landed there and... Um, and this is in, um, with my class fellows in Boston, uh, where I, for the first time, since we're talking about my teaching career, uh, for the first time, I discovered my uh, interest in teaching. And that was because I had to pay my tuition fee. And then for that, I had to teach uh, courses, uh, uh, which, I mean, I was given, uh, this is one of my work back then. Um, and this one is a painting. It's not a print. It's not a digital print. <laughs> This is a painted canvas. Yeah. Yeah. I know you have a bias, Rabia. Uh, yes. Rashid, you're an amazing painter also. We know that. <laughs> uh, again, I don't know if, whether this is a compliment or not. But <laughs> nevertheless. <laughs> uh, I don't... So, <laughs> never mind. Uh, no, so I started calling a, myself... My as, a, as a reaction to this, I've started calling myself a painter and not a visual artist. <laughs> okay. I am more comfortable with the label visual artist and uh, visual practitioner, perhaps. And and, and here's uh, uh, his some of the notes and papers I discovered how I used to document my projects and whatever I was doing. And then I was very keen. I mean, I, I actually don't have all the archives. I mean, uh, they have plenty, but uh, but still, I mean, I think the things that I have left behind in Boston, I greatly became interested in, in teaching, and I loved it. And and then I think uh, since then. I, uh, I do not recall, uh, you know, having taken any serious break uh, in between uh, since that time. So the opportunity I got to be teaching assistant uh, also involved teaching independent, some modules independently. Um, and um, so I mean, I recall writing my teaching philosophy back then uh, that uh, uh, how I started seeing teaching as an extension of in an art practice. It's like an other art form, like a, a creative enterprise, just like uh, uh, whether it's printmaking, drawing, painting, sculpture, it's like teaching is like another another art form within the same uh, uh, domain. And, and so so this was my introduction uh, to uh, uh, and discovery how I, my, my own particular interest in, in teaching and not many people know that uh, the journey as an artist has been very re rewarding, I have to say. Uh, but not many people know, those who know me as an artist only, that most of most hours of my life have gone towards uh, uh, academia and, and uh, in my uh, teaching and uh, things that I've done around my teaching. Yeah, so I, I, I came back. It was an honor to be back uh, and teaching uh, at the art college, which I believe changed my life. Uh, may sound very cliche to say that, uh, but it really did uh, because... Uh, it changes, it changed the whole entire way how you think and how you approach uh, your worldview. So, um, and, and it was an opportunity to work there as a, a faculty member and I thoroughly enjoyed that period. I, from 1995 till uh, 2002 that I was there, it was, uh, you know, an, an, uh, an incredible journey as a teacher and, and I didn't document much. I mean, uh, there wasn't much, you know, um, uh, organize, you know, sort of activity to to document whatever I was doing. So therefore, I don't have too many. Maybe I may dig into some other boxes of files, but I, I don't have much to share uh, visually. But I work with some uh, uh, of the students who are great practitioners now, uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was great to know them in that capacity. And 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 and, uh, and, and it's a very small world that we have around NCA, and people, you either somebody's student or somebody's uh, teacher. And, and then the kind of how it goes beyond uh, the walls of the institution, uh, how uh, it, uh, it develops further uh, extended social, uh, you know, networks. And so uh, NC is a whole, uh, you know, world in itself, a micro sort of universe in itself. Uh, and, then, and then 
just being a, there as an art student was a different thing, but being there as a teacher, it sort of uh, you know expanded uh, this whole idea of what uh, you know experiencing this entire world called NCI. So this is this particular image that you're looking at is uh, is is uh, is the time when a queen visited uh, the, uh, the institution, uh, but uh, the image that you see behind is an old image of. Uh, 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 from New School of Art that I recreated with the help of my students. Some of them are in these photos uh, uh, and they are now established artists and academics themselves. Um, and, and I recall now that um, this micro and macro device of school and the parts that I work now, I didn't think back then that it actually is connected to what uh, I do in transliteration series uh, of late. Uh, so, but it's it was also, I think that this is a particular assignment, which I've repeated many times, but from mass art to uh, NCA and, and, and uh, uh, to a PFD and also continued, uh, uh, you know, repeating this particular project where each uh, class student uh, contributes to the larger whole. Uh, it's something that I've done. I mean, it's, it's, it's perhaps one project which has been repeated uh, through, uh, throughout my uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, teach, journey as a teacher. You know, it's something uh, we, it is also we, reflective of the way I work. I like to work with other minds, you know, and I like to work with the, uh, you know, uh, other team members, uh, you know, and I'm not a solitary space uh, kind of a person. Uh, sorry, Rabia, you were going to say no, something. No, I'm just saying that we take, um, over the years, these things we so much, these exercises and assignments, and even when we were talking to Ms. Hashmi, the kind of things she introduced and uh, the kind of things you've introduced, we now take for granted. Um, and it's really fascinating or up up me hum pre session me up you that uh, um, the, the the idea of electives and and uh, minors also you kind of introduce this opening up of students yes going I, mean, I think uh, my my uh, interest uh, just the way I developed my interest in teaching at mass art I developed my interest in uh, contributing to academia beyond just uh, teaching in the classroom that also actually started uh, somewhat started from NCA uh, I, I was, I proposed a few ideas to Ms. Sashmi. She was very receptive to those and, and, and she, uh, I, I wanted to start contemporary art seminar that I was able to uh, begin uh, there, which I believe has continued. Uh, fine art seminar I started, but didn't continue. And, and, and it, which I think off and on has been uh, part of the curriculum in, in the later years. But then I was also very keen to um, um, initiate some kind of culture uh, there where which would involves teachers uh, you, know, you know methodically developing their curriculum and writing their course outlines and i asked uh, ms hashmi and if there was anything of this kind uh, done in the past and she um, uh, asked uh, the staff there and they, you know uh, pulled out uh, some uh, exercise which was done back in the 70s and then i tried to carry out a, a project to revise uh, these uh, course outlines, which you, they haven't been either re revised or they were just done in a, with a lot of uh, seeing spontaneity. Uh, and, and, and so, but I have to say it, 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 it I mean, I did not meet my entire goals. Uh, and, 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 uh, but anyway, would they get uh, you know, done later on? Uh, so this, and then also I was able to uh, introduce uh, uh, and initiate uh, the elective system uh, so that you're not just taking your minor from within your uh, specific major, but you are able to uh, uh, choose courses from across your uh, various disciplines of design and art within the uh, within the art school. Uh, that's something I was able to do. So yeah, so this is this is something I enjoyed. So this is I when first discovered that I have an interest to do things uh, that make a larger difference and not just uh, what I'm able to do in my classroom. Yes, and and you know you have this uh, you have this desire and this love for pushing boundaries also, um, and you did something and and currently uh, as the dean of uh, the institute um, SWAT BNU, you also were um, you you've introduced over the last few years uh, these uh, non formal uh, structures of learning that where um, would you like to talk about that uh, where you've introduced this idea this idea of the nothing festival and the design yes, summit absolutely absolutely uh, I think uh, what one thing uh, where we Notice it and see which is its strength. Uh, the the uh, things that students are able to do outside the prescribed curriculum, and uh, and I, and it has remained in my mind uh, that uh, which you know 
we exercise because BNU we have developed a very methodical uh, in a very methodical way developed a curriculum and vision and the whole structure and uh, so within that we we uh, introduce this idea uh, of uh, uh, you know doing without the prescribed curriculum for a certain period of time let's say a week or so and uh, 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 suspend this uh, hierarchy of uh, classes and uh, semesters and, and majors and all students are treated as one and they opt for various different kind of the sign up for talk, talks and talk shops of uh, various kind are uh, delivered by uh, uh, individuals who are not necessarily from art and design discipline. Uh, so anyway, we'll, uh, uh, I'll, I'll share with you those thoughts maybe uh, further later on. I mean, this is, I'm just showing you some of the slides from N, images from NCA. Uh, this is a trip that uh, uh, the last image from was also from a trip, and this is a trip to India, which actually some of the contexts uh, uh, and, and relations I built back then, and they later on proved to be very uh, 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 instrumental, and then they played a key role in terms of my uh, visit there again in the future, and then which led to uh, being embraced by the art scene there, and and and, and then I have to say that. Uh, India proved to be a launch pad for my uh, career. Anyway, so this is going through images and I recall that I met Satish Pujral Sabhu, uh, sadly recently passed away. It's beautiful. Uh, and also, and then I realized that uh, it's the teaching which is totally, I, 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 I got so excited about it that for, I didn't realize that uh, after having been back uh, for five years, I didn't produce any single solo show. I hardly produced few works here and there for group shows. Because this whole idea of you are surrounded by art and artists and students is probably sometimes is uh, fulfilling. That's the uh, um, risk or dangers or one of the things of being attached to academia. Because if you are uh, you want to if you want to uh, be into other forms of production, then uh, you know there are only 24 hours in a day, and uh, and then and, and you remain with this idea that you are you know, produce art, which is which you do. It's, it's a form of uh, production too, as I mentioned earlier. But it just took me a while to actually have my first ever solo show and that too was at an NCA gallery. And this is just a photo from there. Yeah, you see, it's really, and, uh, it's very yeah. reassuring because for, for younger graduates, um, your example or some other leading artists give example of, of you, uh, of, of the kind of time you took to do your first solo show. So it, uh, it's good that that happened. It, it, it leaves us with some confidence. <laughs> I, I had my first solo show um, uh, eight years after having graduated from NCA. Uh, but I would not uh, necessarily suggest that everyone has to follow this path. Uh, uh, and and uh, so it's not a formula. But yes, there is no formula. There could be different. Uh, uh, you can discover your thing. You can have an epiphany any time in your career. And, and there's no, there's no laga bandha rule, you know. Uh, so yes, I mean, I, I mean, one of the examples of, uh, you know, my student Adilu Zafar, who I taught, um, the students who I taught was Jamil Baloch, Ahmed Ali Manganhar, Muhammad Ali Talpur, uh, a little bit, uh, I think for a little while, uh, Amra as well, Mehboob Shah, Ayaz Jokyo. These are like amazing minds in themselves, and then I was able to work with them uh, in, in this, uh, I think, two-way stream of learning and sharing. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, and then I must uh, share over here that while I was teaching at NCA, I was simultaneously teaching at P uh, uh, PSFD, Pakistan School of Fashion Design, which uh, is now known as uh, Pakistan Institute of Fashion and Design, PIFD. So these are the two places I was teaching very actively um, and, and, and I was teaching six days a week. So they have a, role, a lot of role to play both these uh, opportunities to shape up my uh, whatever I was able to uh, contribute uh, uh, with the help of my other colleagues at BNU. It has a lot to do with this foundation that was developed uh, and then teaching experience that I developed, ideas that I developed at NCA and then uh, PIFD simultaneously. So at PIFD, I mean, I had a different kind of role. At NCA, mostly I was teaching a variety of courses, but often working uh, with the thesis students and uh, uh, and so mostly discussion based and, and, and then the teaching that I was engaged in at PFD was uh, to do with foundation, foundational studies. And it was a very different context because uh, a foundation, I mean, 
I mean, uh, the, the fundamentals are like uh, they, they could be very overlapping for various different different degree programs. But I, I was very keen to make it very uh, fashion context specific and design specific. So I was teaching design theory, art appreciation, and a foundation drawing, and I just totally loved it because it was a context where the uh, nature of other courses by default, because of the kind of curriculum they were following from the French French school had to be it's very nature had to be very uh, you know disciplined and and then very uh, uh, you know fixed kind of curriculum and so i i assumed the role for myself very early on because i was only teaching in foundation program that i have to give them something different so yeah so i i, I in a way i mean i got the opportunity to assume a, a role where i was uh, offering my students what they uh, uh, which was used to balance what they were doing in other courses so they had to go through very rigorous kind of a, a curriculum of uh, you know uh, from the French fashion school and, and it involved certain kind of pattern draping kind of skill set. But it used to be one course which I, I, I thought it would be very important to uh, help them find their own direction, creative direction within their work. So I used these courses as an excuse for that. So, so at fashion school, in contrast to NCI, I assumed a very different kind of role where uh, I knew that the courses that they were studying in other 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 classes, um, the curriculum they were going through in other courses um, was has, had, was of very different nature. They had to follow a certain uh, you know teachers had to follow a certain curriculum from the French fashion school that uh, PSFD was affiliated by, and it's the nature of that very discipline. It sounds very glamorous, but it has very uh, rigid uh, not rigid but very structured. Uh, uh, fixed kind of uh, curriculum and skill set they have to acquire in pattern making and uh, draping. So I was getting an opportunity to, to, to provide them a very different kind of experience where uh, they could explore other faculties of their mind and, and, and uh, the drawing was just an excuse for that. Uh, anyway, this is, uh, this is an image with Madame Suga uh, because you ha I had to go for short training courses just to be able to learn a few things to make my courses more uh, uh, fashion department specific. And then comes uh, BNU. Uh, uh, and, and there was an overlapping period as well because uh, uh, Mrs. Navish Shazad, who used to be a uh, uh, principal at uh, fashion school, uh, after her uh, tenure there, they, she got an opportunity to work with the uh, Beacon House National University project. Uh, when the, the, the project only existed in papers and she was the first one to write the feasibility for, for that very project. And she uh, uh, called me and she said, uh, the university will be hiring faculty. Uh, and then if you could, uh, if you're interested in, in, in putting together uh, some kind of curriculum and, 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 uh, uh, and, and a planning and design for the, such a department or a school uh, catering to art and design. So I, uh, you know, was very excited to have being uh, offered that opportunity uh, to the extent that I wasn't offered a contract as yet. And it was just a talk and I was given an office and space. So I used to leave NCA and then and, and in the afternoon and go there. And, uh, and I, I volunteered uh, for about six months since March 2002 till, uh, uh, you know, September, October 2002. Uh, well, I, where I've worked in a solitary space kind of a uh, environment where I, I had just blank papers and and, an, I, and a pen to myself. And I wasn't even sure that whatever I was thinking and writing, it will actually get materialized in the same way or in a, something close to it. But it was a great, great experience for me because I had no boundaries to follow. I had no kind of, I could just think totally afresh if I have to start if uh, you know, if we, if, if some people have to start a new art school from scratch, had no baggage of history, no academic bureaucracy, how would it look like? And that I think gave me a, a kind of a mental space, and it took me to a place in, in my mind where actually I took a macro view. Macro and micro plays a huge role in my practice and my thinking and my the way about. Uh, so I was able to take a macro view of things over here. And and then really look at my my whole positioning. Uh, I mean my 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 own views. My uh, um, uh, you know and 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 how the curriculum should look like and how. And in fact, this was the period which clarified some thoughts in my head, which led to the work that I produced two three years later, which break became my breakthrough exhibition uh, of uh, the mosaic series and the whole body of work. It is actually in a way owing to this period where. 
I could really step back and then and then and then look at uh, what the things that I believe in as a whole, and then uh, so it brought a lot of clarity. Which you know we can talk further more about it. But uh, so I was also asked that to recommend people, and I thought that I shouldn't just ask you know group of friends from NCLP every to move here. Some some friends friend, some some colleagues did, uh, but uh, I was I was interested in a new kind of dynamics of uh, you know. So I I, 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 I invited uh, Huma Mulchi from Karachi, uh, 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 you know Malcolm Hutchinson who's from uh, Scotland and Julia Ahmed who has taught with me at NCA from Germany. She joined there. So Ju Julia Ahmed, Huma, and myself were the you know after the initial things that I've done on my own, they were the people who came and 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 and, and uh, helped me develop, uh, help us develop uh, uh, this further. And uh, one thing that we have really enjoyed at, uh, at, at this whole journey at BNU uh, is the fact that we, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have, we don't follow any kind of, we don't have to follow any kind of uh, economic bureaucracy. And then, and then there's a lot of freedom, immense freedom uh, to be able to uh, uh, keep on questioning the curriculum that you teach and, and, then, and then the programs that you run there and then the new programs you want to start. Uh, it has continued to date and then this is one of the earliest uh, you know sort of casual group meetings and then things could happen what they call in america water cooler meetings that you're informally just sitting and then then then, then uh, you know brainstorming ideas now we have more uh, formal structures such as curriculum committee for that as well but these are the early days huma is probably has taken this photograph and then later on mrs hashmi joined as the uh, uh, the dean as well uh, later on and, and I'm just skipping a whole 17 years of BNU and uh, because this has to be a separate discussion and I'm sure some of my colleagues are leading academics in their own right uh, uh, who are heading with these uh, disciplines at BNU, I'm sure will be part of your discussion and I'm sure they can share some of those images and what we do and what we what, what our students and alumni have been doing at BNU for all these years. So I'm just jumping from those early days to uh, a very recent photograph where uh, you know all the faculty is sitting in this group photo, and which is really I think uh, the strength, the way they uh, come together and the way they are a stakeholder and participant in uh, the curriculum that has been evolving and which we are developing. It's it's the key. It's the key. So I just wanted to jump to that, and these are it's owing to uh, the, all the, the great team that we have. Uh, this is some just some of the um, uh, you know. Um, I mean, physical evidence. I mean, you know, things are not always tangible in that sense. But, uh, but you must have seen some of our publications and which reflect the things that have been happening there. Uh, and 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 you, as you can see, the nothing fest you spoke about, nothing fest design summit prologue. These are some of the uh, and and and, and, and uh, stories we tell that you have ever part of, uh, and also our ongoing discussion about uh, city as a classroom. These are the, some of the questions that we uh, are at the forefront of our debates that what is the future of academia and and and, 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 what, and, and how does uh, self-learning which has always been there it's not an entirely new phenomenon but internet uh, and, and the tools of virtuality gives an, another di dimension and then then it, it makes you wonder that how where we are headed and, and we have to uh, in this age where things are changing such a fast pace uh, because of the exponential growth in technology, you have to, uh, 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 you know, you know, stay up to date with the certain developments, and then to be able to predict uh, where one, uh, where we are heading as human beings, and how things are. The notion of education and learning and sharing is evolving. It's 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 crucial. Uh, so we were, for instance, were able to recent times we were able to. Um, uh, organize uh, uh, something initiative called Global Classroom, which sort of came out of uh, our limitation uh, during the COVID period. We thought that if we were to offer during summer uh, courses to a handful of students, our own students, our repeating courses during summer, then who's stopping us? Uh, what is stopping us from inviting teachers from anywhere in the world and having students joining uh, uh, those classrooms uh, from anywhere in the world? So this was a a modest beginning, but with a with a very uh, potentially big ambition, and I think uh, that's the uh, kind of future of uh, you know uh, teaching in a way. Can I ask you something, Rashid? Sure. Um, 
So can I ask you something on the lines of interdisciplinarity and and how you know teaching during um, maybe from 50s to 90s was really looking from taking from modernism and it was talking about individualism it was talking about the ideas of self growth and and how teaching and learning art and design now has taken more from the context which is around us now so you know our political social scenarios and and how do you think that sort of has changed or evolved in art and design education um again you know interdisciplinarity how has that shifted and how has that become part of education and academia um because that is also a lot to do with you know how 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 bnu is uh, organizing its programs if i'm not wrong i think uh, the the uh, you rightly uh, uh, and i think uh, analyze this whole thing uh, linking linking it with modernism and the existentialist sort of thought and the self and the individualism i think it's, if we can just expand and con- complicate it a little bit more further it's it's modernism is linked with you know the whole political and economic sort of development post uh, industrial revolution and that entire development uh, 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 needed uh, a whole industry and 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 and, and then contributors and workers and participants who could only be produced through um, a very defined disciplines and various different compartments that we have seen in the 20th century uh, things uh, are getting democratized in a different way we are i think in a transition because of this uh, information age uh, we are moving uh, uh, with whatever pace though we do not see a larger change in the political and economic system but uh, maybe there is an optimism in people like myself that the change will come from within with this new uh, tools of technology and and then therefore there is we see a glimpse and uh, you know a change uh, and 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 an interdisciplinary approach multidisciplinary cross disciplinary approach is only a, a sort of a, a hint towards mm-hmm. that change and 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 a change of our you know the changes that we will see in the 20th 21st century um so um and then if we just focus on our discipline of art and design we have seen how uh, graphic design is called communication design in in order to be inclusive and then include various various other strands of uh, similar practices which could not just simply fit in in the word or label or practice we called graphic design similarly uh, to call yourself a painter or a sculptor or a, or a um, or a printmaker is no longer uh, you know sort of a practice now i mean there is no harm in taking a pure spot but uh, so 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 the rigid boundaries are, are sort of uh, no, no longer there so there is i think more freedom and which is great and and and, and, and i think uh, that um, kind of uh, interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity is a feature of our times and we as educators i think the best we can do is to make that option available to the students it's not that uh, interdisciplinarity has to be everyone's cup of tea and they all have to uh, so it's it's uh, it's it's basically sort of dismantling of this uh, uh, sort of uh, hard boundaries with amongst these uh, disciplines and then maybe new forms of knowledge specialized knowledge knowledge will uh, be formed and and is being formed uh, within the creative industry uh, through very interesting kind of cross that we seeing and when in cross that we seeing between a creative industry and uh, subjects which are not um, necessarily uh, uh, historically considered part of uh, uh, art and design disciplines such as bio arts is a discipline which actually has given uh, us the uh, at, at bnu um, uh, um, the idea uh, to start a very different kind of program it's not a, exactly may sound like a liberal arts uh, degree and it's not one of those uh, degrees that are being offered elsewhere with labels such as art and technology or uh, bio arts or etc i think we I, i believe that i mean it's from one limitation you will move to another boundary or another limitation and as opposed to that you provide a broad based platform where in this program new program as i'm going to tell you about we are trying to inculcate and provide that experience in our in, in our stu- to our students um where they can le- learn a tools of adaptability through their own experience so things that are going they are certainly not going to be practicing and, and at least not in terms of the medium and format uh, in in 10 15 years from now there's going to be rapid changes uh, that we've already seen in the last my generation x generation i was telling you in the in the beginning how the changes that we have seen they will see much uh, changes with much faster pace Mm-hmm. so i think the tools of adaptability is the best they can have so the, the program that i believe will ensure that 
uh, at an undergrad level is uh, uh, that we have started called um, BA Honors IDA. It stands for Interdisciplinary Expanded Design and Arts. So the from the premise of art and design without any boundary between art and design, they can curl knowledge from a discipline other than art and design, whether it be it sciences or humanities or uh, business or psychology or media, and try to expand the notion of what art and design can be. And 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 then so let's see uh, where, where, where it goes and how it goes. Now, I mean, as I was mentioning earlier, that from the you know our, our journey as an institution, where what, even water cooler meetings or casual meetings led to some changes, we have sort of formalized to some extent. The spontaneity still exists. The freedom to be able to make changes still exists. But as we are growing as an institution, and and and, and, and so to be to ensure to, that everybody uh, is involved in the program is a participant. So we have sort of devised a sort of a model or a structure uh, where uh, some sort of vision and, 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 and uh, uh, um, guiding principles that we develop and keep on changing to, by the way, they're not fixed, you know, together with the help of curriculum committee, sort of uh, uh, help us tweak or change the curriculum structure model, uh, which uh, then leads to the specific models for each degree program, which may be slight variations. Uh, to some extent, and then that leads to the uh, courses that fit into that structure, and then uh, the course outlines that are you know that are totally the prerogative of the faculty members. In fact, the new changes that we made the two years back, the new foundation and the new post foundation now uh, in the undergrad program at least has they have the in an grad school too. There's a, there's a shared pool of electives and a wide range of electives that you know they share, and we have made those courses into standalone courses. So the, 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 there's no minimum prescription from the institution. So there's no prerequisite or so there are standalone thematic studio and theory courses, which have more ownership of the faculty members. So they, 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 they can propose their ideas. So the more and more uh, sort of, uh, uh, if I may use the word power lies with the student, uh, sorry, faculty, when it comes to the you know, being active participants in the, in, the, in the larger sort of structure and then uh, outcome is actually depending on the students, and they, they are the real uh, people actually who lead the, lead lead this whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the key things in our uh, as part of our mission and vision is that our curriculum structure model, the way the entire thing unfolds, has to be such that students uh, uh, it is student centric and and, and it's pro choice, and students are leading the way. I mean, they we have the experience as faculty members, we have the, the responsibility to impart. Uh, you know, certain knowledge and experiences, but it's actually them who are truly belong to this time. And, and therefore it's crucial and it is most important to our whole entire endeavor that uh, everything that we do has to be student centric. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there has been, um, so there, there's another kind of school of thought um, shared by some of the educators who we've already interviewed in this series, who believe that, um, uh, there is no structure to creativity and 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 uh, there shouldn't be a there, there is no kind of formula that determines uh, a creative uh, innovation uh, innovative thinking um, but but with the kind of structure um, or, or method you have developed over these years at at, at BNU uh, you you perhaps think otherwise um, Yes, absolutely. Let me clarify here. I mean, I, uh, I, I will tend to agree with this, but uh, there's a misconception here. Sometimes people believe that uh, what they may think is very organic and fluid and are not following any structure may have actually be uh, uh, guilty of many rigid structures. Uh, so to be able to ensure uh, some kind of fluidity and that there is the so structure to me is not about way of segregating things. Structure to me is way of connecting the dots. It's a it's a having a system where uh, you, you know you are making a sense of uh, you know those you connecting the dots. You are ensuring the connectivity. That's how I see this use of structure. And mm -hmm. and then rather than uh, leaving uh, it to uh, uh, I mean it's these are just words. Or I mean I mean or, or, you know you can have be organic and fluid within a, some sort of structure which have mutually agreed upon. And which is not fixed and forever it can you know, evolve and it can change as opposed to having something which is uh, actually may, may, maybe I, mean, I don't want to give any examples but maybe actually very um, uh, stagnant uh, stagnant and, and, and rigid and not moving 
um, because you're not ensuring some sort of system for it. For example, uh, if I may give you an example from democracy, democracy is just a one word. One can say democracy has to be organic and fluid and without any structure. But but there has to be some sort. There are various different systems that the world has invented. Uh, some works better for others. Some provide, ensure more. Uh, sort of uh, they're true to the idea of democracy. But there have to be some sort of system in which anything has to manifest, and there has to be clarity of thought. So all I'm talking about when I use the word is a clarity of thought and inclusion of its participants. That's what I mean by that. Mm. Can I can I take on from this point and and ask you something about you know structure and um, having some sort of a system and how investing in that sort of a structure and system is so crucial um, for educators. So particularly talking about teachers who are preparing these briefs, who are preparing these projects to be taken into studios um, for their students. And I think when I'm asked this question, I'm also looking at um, um, early levels like foundation year perhaps, and. And, and I think I, I want to ask you about your opinion. What do you think about ownership here? Um, and, and the reason I'm asking that is because, you know, the kind of energy that goes into developing these structures, uh, whether it's, it's working on a project handout, whether it's really formulating a curriculum or a course um, for the students. I feel that um, there's so much energy going in there that, and, and that energy sort of gets split, that ownership sort of gets split between the faculty, between the teacher, between the institution, between the students, right? Who are attempting it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, that's part of the contract, right? But, but I think what I'm also trying to understand is, you know, how you work as an artist, you work like an artist when you're in the studio because those projects that you're creating are like your babies and you put so much soul into them. Um, and I don't know if all teachers do that, but but I have seen so many friends and educators who really invest, like yourself. So, like, what, what's your opinion on that? What would would you have to? So basically, Sabahat, you're saying te teaching is a thankless job. Well, <laughs> I don't want to say that. <laughs> uh, that's the gist of it. Yes, I I do agree. <laughs> but there's uh, there are other ways to look at it. I think there are two sides to the uh, notion of. Uh, uh, it is, it is uh, you know, ownership. When we when we talk about the idea of ownership in this context, there are two sides to it. One is the authorship and the you know you know malkiyat aapka kis ki uspe hai. But the other side is of the responsibility and and, mm -hmm. and ownership in that regard as well. Um, yes, it's not uh, as rewarding as some other things. We live in a um, uh, for a long time live in a capitalist world where everything has uh, any kind of intellectual idea that has an intellectual worth uh, has a, a financial worth too. And uh, uh, so we have experienced that, I've experienced that very closely uh, when, when, when things happen dramatically uh, in the financial sense within my art practice, within my art career. Uh, I tried not to get carried away with that. And I think teaching uh, sort of kept me uh, very, very much on the ground and, and, and balanced, I would say. So. Uh, so, so it, in in this world where everything can be seen and and, and through the lens of you know um, uh, capitalism and the larger economic reality we all operate under, this is one of the things that I know of uh, teaching is is not you know fully administered or governed by that. Of course, we are get we get paid. There are tenured positions. There, better paid, highly paid, you know, underpaid sort of whole sort of system. There, this money is attached uh, mm -hmm. to it, but it's not proportionate to some of the other, uh, uh, you know, uh, manifestation within the creative industry where the, your ownership has much more reward and, 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 and it stays with you because here it's the nature of it is very giving. Mm -hmm. And then once it leaves your mm -hmm. mind and your, uh, you know, domain, you know, physical domain, and it's, 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 it's you creating an, a project and you have us, I understand uh, that you, you it, it is your creative input in it as a curator of that class or a curator of that, uh, you know, particular assignment. And it's, uh, it's a sheer act of generosity that, you know, then it becomes their work and their ownership. And, and then you're left with this, uh, the not, so not such a tangible idea, but I think some sort of ownership still remains there that you can take pride of. It may not be able to gauge uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the sense that I spoke earlier in the financial sense or in, mm -hmm. in the sense of the commodity sense uh, probably doesn't have, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. both good and bad. Most part, good thing I would say. No, I I I, I agree. I agree. Um, do you want to ask? Yeah, that uh, or should I? Hmm. Yeah. So I just wanted to comment on on uh, uh, the discussion you two are having. Uh, some 
again, there's another school of thought that believes that a good teacher is one who becomes redundant uh, uh, eventually. And also, and there's there's some there's some people who think that teaching is one of the most fulfilling jobs because you know once you enter this class. You get so much up, you know. You uh, you you get high on people. <laughs> I get high on people when I'm teaching. <laughs> yeah, you know, may I ask, you, a, may this, I ask this, you a question? <laughs> may I interject <laughs> and ask you a question? Uh, if I if I can, they, if they can be switch of roles. <laughs> Which <laughs> school of thought do you belong to? <laughs> you um, always go to other people. <laughs> Uh, that I mean, I'm, do you belong uh, to the school of thought uh, the, who think that uh, in a in a the redundant part? and I, i i i don't think so i i think that teaching for me is very very fulfilling and i get a lot of energy from my students and they keep me updated um and they keep me charged and they keep me on my toes and that's uh, uh everything centered around teaching for me but we're not talking about my experiences um uh here uh, i i want to ask you um but foundation year that's why my next question to you uh, people when they when they enter into an art when they come when they decide badi mushkil se wo decide karte hain with you know a lot of peer and pressure also but when they eventually uh, decide to come to an art school they have certain notions of art making which uh, uh, be in you particularly or the way you kind of envision making they they, they um, it dismantles that uh, idea uh, and it starts all the way from the entry test and the way it's a kind of uh, designed uh, how do you then um, uh, deal with student expectations at a foundation year level i will slightly disagree uh, i don't think students come there with a, a certain expectation or a certain skill set we which we may have to unlearn in fact that's the advantage we have um the kind of students we get they 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 we don't have to work too hard make them unlearn uh, uh certain things and in fact that is why from the beginning we were very uh, cautious and careful about the kind of admission test we were to conduct uh, uh to uh, and the criteria that we had to set uh, to admit people um so um so so so, so that that they'll, they'll we don't have to worry but yes we do uh do uh, as compared to some other institutions or old established institutions we do not have a big pool to choose from we have a diversity of another kind often we spoke about diversity and some people believe that diversity doesn't exist uh, there but that which is not true uh for instance we have students joining in from all over south asia uh, through the uh uh, 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 uh um so so but anyway talking of foundation i think it's a very interesting domain uh it's the most challenging and it and it, it can be the most exciting and i have for the number of years uh taught foundational courses uh, both theory and and in studio and and because the challenge part is that oh, it's very easy to believe that uh foundation is something that is not supposed to change or some the basics are something which don't change basics change as much as anything else and and then the, the, the you know what i've early on very started believing that uh, some of the uh, ideas uh, very cutting edge ideas and and and, and, and thoughts contemporary thoughts could very well be simplified and and, and made part of the uh, uh, learning at foundational level so it's not like, like that you follow a chronology ke aapne ancient civilization padhani hai foundation mein and then you're going to teach renaissance in the third year and then you they will reach to contemporary time so that model we do not follow and and and, and, and for instance in this new foundation that we have introduced for last two years uh, we're very excited about it and and and, and even four dimensionality is a course because uh, this is pre covid that we anticipated that moving image and and the notion of virtuality is something which has to be introduced very early on so two dimensionality concepts of two dimensionality three dimensionality four dimensionality uh, visuality and memory is uh, is how we have envisaged this course and in between these theory and studio courses there is a course that bridges the two which is called contextuality and then uh, for the first time uh, we have introduced in the semester 2 option to uh, choose electives so it's a, it still remains broad based but uh, uh, broad based in a way that there is a prescription and there is a prescribed courses and there as well as freedom for the students uh, to choose courses even for foundation so because the what the kind of post foundation we have designed uh, which is in implement which is in practice now from this year um it is all about as i was telling earlier 
standalone courses with the ownership of the faculty and then the students have maximum freedom to choose their teacher choose a particular thematic you know sort of course which is can be a very minor aspect or some narrow aspect or which is expanded into a broader sort of idea within their uh, you know when teacher take it as a teaching project so so therefore they so they had to be prepared in a very different way to deal with that kind of a post foundation mm -hmm. so uh, so let's see how it develops because you really have to see four years cycle to be able to see what kind of uh, uh, results it generates mm -hmm. Yeah, but is there anything? Yeah. Uh, but is there anything? Um, what is different about the candidates that apply to uh, SWAT B and U? I think for now, for one, I mean, though we do have diversity in 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 in, in sense of uh, South Asian students, but uh, uh, still, I think uh, which is changing now. We would like to get more students from other parts of the country and not just Punjab or Lahore. Uh, uh, so. Uh, but other than that, mostly it's the uh, the middle class uh, uh, students, uh, and with the exception some few uh, upper class, because uh, we uh, not many people know Beacon House, uh, and I we think we must uh, give credit to its uh, founders, uh, and 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 it's misleading because the name Beacon House is associated often with the uh, for profit venture of the high school system, whereas this particular uh, initiative is a separate entity. Just the name is carried there. And it's a foundation, not-for-profit foundation, which for which they have given generous money from the beginning, and many other people have given. So now uh, the students uh, who can afford, they you know pay full fee, and but if they are a a students who are performing, they get scholarship because of the performance. If they also uh, establish a need for uh, on on the basis of their uh, financial uh, you know situation, they additionally they get uh, need based scholarship. So it's technically possible. For uh, x number of students to study for free, which is, I believe, is not even possible in state-run institutions uh, at this point. Uh, so, um, yeah, but we would there, there is a different kind of diversity, as I said, that exists at uh, at Beacon House School, uh, at the Beacon House uh, University. Yeah, and there's another uh, the, the kind of um, I, I do feel that uh, the people who apply um, also have uh, uh, you know since their unki job. Uh, uh, they're not um, since they're not uh, 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 asked to kind of uh, you, you, uh, be trained in the the kind of traditional typical ways of uh, a figure drawing or jo ke bahut sari institutions mein preschool pre art school uh, teach teach kiya jata hai. Uh, so that we've been very very clear about from the beginning. That that huh. we've been very clear about because yeah. I think uh, uh, that 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 is only maybe it, I'm not saying it's invalid, but that's only uh, you know assesses one faculty. Uh, or one kind of uh, skill set, and then I think we focus mostly on the aptitude, and uh, and 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 uh, you know whether they have the inclination and the drive to be uh, to perform uh, in in a uh, in an art and design program. So th this is why. But but I have to say the uh, from those times when there used to be only you know a couple of galleries, at the time uh, still don't have too many. But there's a time when there used to be only a couple of institutions and well and, and a handful of institutions um, that offered art and design you know disciplines now we have come a long way and and i think more the merrier and, and if the different schools have a different flavor that's that's great that's the strength of the art scene and it's just the same, same way that uh, art art in an art art in pakistan has used to revolve around one or two institutions now uh, the the it's 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 changing now and now uh, you know there are other informal means of uh, you know engaging with uh, the 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 you know knowledge that is manifests in visual production are are binales and muzzle initiative uh, so they are also playing their part so so I would say that it should not be seen certain thing versus certain thing and uh, it shouldn't be seen that I mean since we're focusing too much on BNU right now so I just want to make clarify it that. Everybody and different institutions and different organizations are contributing in their own way, and it's good to have this kind of diversity existing yeah. within the larger uh, uh, art, uh, art, okay. art infrastructure, art and design infrastructure structure that we have. Yeah. So, um, Rashid, my next question to you would be about um, how difficult I have always found grading um, art projects, design projects. And, um, and and I'll, I'll give my own example because I've been working at an institute where we have a lot of students coming from sciences background. 
Um, it's a mixed student uh, pool, but um, a lot of them come from a sciences background. And um, I always find it difficult to first make them understand how grading works because art and design projects, ko, how do you grade? You know, ek to, there is a lot of subjectivity involved there. But of course, there are benchmarks involved and you have to grade them according to a certain criteria that you have preset. But um, the, the whole training that they go through in the first year, it's, it's not an easy task. How do you, what's your take on it? And how, what's your suggestion for it? How should that be managed? And how should that be made easier? If, if yeah, This is the most uh, least uh, exciting and most challenging part of being an art teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were never happy with our teachers. And I think students cannot be happy with the, in the grading uh, in the absolute sense. And they keep that, mm. I think, uh, that grudge or uh, you know, unhappiness Throughout. for a long time. Uh, yeah, so what I have learned over the years, and then it's something that there is no rule or formula though, but some sort of um, consensus amongst the faculty group, and then and there's a developing understanding of develop, that once we have uh, given admission to a student, we cannot judge them for their, uh, you know, creative ability beyond a certain point. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are engaging and they, with the class, they're, you know, giving their very best, uh, mentally and physically. So I think the uh, minimum and maximum mark window has to be very narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, to the extent this could be between 75 and 90, for instance. So mm -hmm. that is what I've learned that you mark within that narrow window. And, and then this poses least kind of problems and, and, and uh, disappointment or lack of motivation among students. And if you want to uh, penalize any student that has to be for their lack of engagement with the class and the whole idea rather than what we may subjectively call good or bad art and design. Mm -hmm. and, and good or bad art or design takes me to my next question, which is how do you nurture good teachers? What's, what's the trick of nurturing good teachers? Can, can we do that? I think the teachers have to take the responsibility themselves, but uh, if uh, in, you have the responsibility uh, for, uh, in, if you're in that role of as a responsibility, uh, the suggestion, I mean, uh, I would give the, the more formal and in both a combination of formal and informal avenues are to be uh, tried. Uh, one to begin with the opportunity, of course, to giving them the freedom to be able to teach and what they want to teach. And then, and then that it starts with that freedom and an opportunity. And secondly, when they are part of it, then there has to be some kind of uh, structures where they are participant in the overall, uh, uh, you know, development of the program as to where does the brick that they are producing is going to fit in in that entire thing of scheme mm. of things. And of course they'll make their own decisions, but they need to be made participants. That's point number two. And then, and, 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 and then of course, they, uh, uh, you know, we are very proud of um, uh, the, uh, our education program that uh, uh, many people have contributed to. And I we believe that it's not just a ownership of DNU because um, students from all over Pakistan, from institutions such as IBS, NCA, uh, high school system, they all come from various places. And then similarly, it's a during mostly taking place during summer. So we are able to engage uh, thesis supervisors and faculty members from all over. So it's not any one institution's uh, 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 program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, I, and, and I think we, the program is evolving. I mean, though it started off uh, with the, by following certain models elsewhere. Uh, and, 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 and I think we must uh, at this moment, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, give, uh, you know, credit is due many places, but I specifically would like to mention uh, uh, Saira Sheikh, late Saira Sheikh, who was the first, uh, the program head for uh, uh, this, you know, this uh, art education program that we have in masters. So in service, it's tailor made for in service teachers and, and they are able to, uh, uh, get, you know, continue pursue this program without having to quit their job. The program is designed, the curriculum is designed in such a way. So whatever they do during the year is connected to uh, their courses during uh, the summer. And then there are, could be some other informal uh, avenues. Uh, for instance, what you guys are doing, this initiative that you started, this is a way of uh, people to engage with uh, ideas and thought to do with pedagogy uh, in the realm of art and design. And, and who knows, I'm sure you must have lots of other ideas then uh, this is the way people have, uh, other than conferences and et cetera, which can get very, I think, uh, you know, uh, less engaging in, 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 from my point of view, but there could be other ways um, uh, to, to, to uh, uh, 
you know other avenues of uh, you know faculty development such as uh, uh, faculty residencies for instance maybe art mm -hmm. educators residency is something conversations tp can uh, initiate in the near future Hopefully. yes we we'll have to do that <laughs> um uh, what was you are a visionary and you think you're you're sometimes you're most times ahead of your time and even this um, uh, you know the introduction of the use of new media and 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 digital media is mostly part of your legacy in in this region um how do you what other legacies do you want to set uh, um, for uh, the future world? How do you see the future of uh, art education and art schools? Uh, Rabia, you mentioned uh, that uh, you feel high on people. And I feel high on the fact that there is so much that can be done uh, in the place we, uh, 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 where we reside. Uh, there is so much re required to be done. And, and especially when you believe in this idea, that one doesn't have to, I, I personally do that because it's very easy to fall into this trap. Uh, uh, you know, when, we, when you think of the way forward in, and if you belong to a developing country and you want to think of the way forward, it, it's very easy to you to, uh, uh, you know, find refuge in the uh, romantic romance of the past, or you can think that you are very progressive and you are going to follow into the footsteps of developing uh, places, regions, and then, and, so, but you'll always be behind and, and you always be in the past. So I think thinking afresh and, and, and is, 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 is the way forward. And, and then when you do that, there's so much that can be done and you can find your own new, new legacies. You can find your own new trajectories and, and then meet other people, other minds somewhere in that, in, in the paths where they cross those trajectories. So, uh, for instance, uh, uh, this uh, belief has given insight and, and an opportunity for me to work on some ideas, which I don't know whether they uh, fall in the category far or something else. At the moment, we are finding a new label for it. Uh, I'm working on a project, of, uh, which is, uh, I'm only sharing one word, art is the label <laughs> uh, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, that we are using for now, for the discussion sake, but it will uh, manifest and result in uh, something that will be uh, launched next year, 1st of July. And uh, it's something very different than what, uh, anything that I may have done in the past. Yeah, and you, uh, um, and you also talk about it as, uh, as uh, something that is post-contemporary. Um, uh, so on that very profound thought, Rashid, we'd like to thank you uh, for um, sharing your very precious uh, uh, thoughts and your insights. We often say at the end of the session that uh, uh, artists or designers um, so celebrate and, and, and but but we um, but we don't have uh, but I think star academics co celebrate Kanna is also equally important. Uh, and thank you for being one of those and thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so, Very thank you so much. You. Back with the initiative. Thank you. Take care for that. Good afternoon.